Not knowing how to read or write can cause embarrassment, isolation and fear. Now and for six people tell their stories of liberating literacy. What on earth have this Brazilian professor and these six people watching him in England got in common? What they have in common is a special insight into literacy. The six? Because they themselves all had difficulty in reading and writing as adults, like six million others in the UK. The professor? Because his commitment to a radical literacy program in Brazil led to his imprisonment by a military dictatorship in 1964 and then forced exile. So Paulo Freire became involved in literacy work all over the world and his books won him international acclaim. He's now back in Brazil as Minister of Education for the city of Sao Paulo. To mark International Literacy Year, I filmed the six in Britain and took their experiences to Brazil for Paulo Freire's comment. The outcome? Liberating literacy. Sometimes the teachers, some of them were quite strict. If you didn't do this work, you actually get the belt. <laughs> I got the belt so many times when I was at school. <laughs> but they were forced to do it. They a, uh, got a piece of rope or a tie, I'm nearly sure it's a tie, actually out of the desk in front of it, and uh, tied it around my wrist and tethered it around and tied it around my waist so my hand would be at the back of it. and. It was tied down this, so it was actually tied out back in my hand, so I couldn't use it. When I think back at school, um, I don't think anybody were bothered. Um, they teach top three, they got them through and they weren't bothered. What I remember was just horrific. I just, um, I felt I got a little bit behind, and that just seemed to snowball. My mother died when I was quite young. I was eight, so, and I had to change location of school and that changed things so i didn't do a lot of schooling in jamaica one situation was where uh i had a hat well it, a cone hat and it had a big deal on and i had to stand in a corner with it on my head corinne shires works as an assistant in a nursing home in west yorkshire we asked Corinne Shires to come back with us to her old school, a place she'd avoided for 20 years. Building is still the same. The same books in the same place, the library part. When I went in the classroom, well, it would just been like back at school. We used to go to a remedial class for special lessons, and it was like they used to say, so and so, so and so, so and so, please go to class number whatever it was. And they knew where we was going. And they all used to call us dumb and daft and different things. A lot of stigma and labelling all the time. And then there were big windows in the school. And they used to just put through the windows, pull funny faces and make signs that you were daft. And couldn't read and write, so all we needed was help. Corinne was back again in what used to be called the remedial class of her old primary school. The teachers there have to cope with an acute shortage of books and materials. We've got a piece of paper and quite simply there are two letters on it. T-H, G, R, GR, And on this one, S-H, which makes SH. Next. You're going to look in the newspaper and you're going to find those letter blends in your newspaper. When you've found a word, try to say that word to the rest of your group 
because somebody there might know it or could help you, or you know it yourself. And then you're going to write it on the sticky piece, pieces of paper and put it in the row. I don't know what that one says. Found it, but I don't know what that says. Jill, friend. No, it's not friend. I had no backing at home. And I used to have to come home, do the tea, get the my sisters and brothers ready for school, like the next morning, and get myself ready, get, you know, breakfast. And then me arriving at school, say, about five past nine in the morning. So by the time I'd... Well, I didn't really have time to do any homework or any revising or anything. You know, we're doing jobs for other people. Do you enjoy this type of work? Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, when I went to school, we didn't do not like this. We just, like, sat and just with a book and pen. Mm. You just have to write. If you're at school 11 years and you, you leave school and you can't read and write, whose fault is it? How, how is it possible if for kids in the working class area, for example, of London of, as well as of Sao Paulo, of the states, black people in the states, for example. How is it possible for the kids to feel themselves free and full of hope, of happiness, trying to get their own language into the hands in order to get the command on it? If the, the words proposed to them to start to, to read how to write and to read don't belong to them. The system puts in their hands that they are not capable. No, I, I say no. The, the lack of, of ability is, 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 is much more the, the, the inability of the school of the system and not of the kids. This is for me the, one of the main reasons is the lack of respect for the identity of the kids, the cultural identity, the classes identity of the kids, the lack of respect for their way of speaking, of thinking. When I first went into a job, I went to get an interview and the guy spoke to me, the manager, and I just spoke to him. And then he turned and I turned around and said to him, I said, I've got a wee bit of problem with uh, reading, understanding, writing. And he looked at me. When I look at it and think about it, now they know where I were going. They know I was going to back to this. If you try to aim higher um, in your ability to read and write properly, then that could have an effect in you. As soon as I fetched the foreman, then I knew that was time to quit. It used to be my job to load the van, and we was working at a distance. I had to load the correct stuff or else. So he said, right, load the van and make a list. I thought, oh, no. And I, was, I haven't got a pen. You give me a pen. I thought, oh, no, I've run out of excuses. I'll just work out how much paper you need. John Glynn eventually found a literacy um, course on his own initiative and a good job. He's now got his own painting and decorating business paper. in Oldham. We asked him to come with us to Blackburn to look at the literacy scheme started on an employer's initiative. I think a lot of employers just don't think, you know, just aren't interested. A recent government survey says only one in five manual workers get proper training. And I think if we're not careful, this country, if we don't spend a lot more money on training, I think we're going to lose out a lot. Oh, can you tell me what sort of... Um Benefits, uh, work given. Yeah, it's given us uh, a lot more confidence. Medflex started its literacy scheme for its manual employees because some were unable to fill in new production cards and others could not effectively participate in productivity discussions. So they called in Workbase, a charity which specialises in training for manual employees. 
In their report, Workbase said a proper and effective training will ensure that every employee has a role to play in achieving greater efficiency and therefore productivity. The management response was prompt. It started a literacy course on factory premises. And I'll drop back down, we take it out, trim all the flashing off, yeah. give it a quick visual check and put it in a box. All right, I see. So, so you're so loading the, it. Yeah. Whereabouts? Well, I'm loading it down here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's when it's closed. Right. Well, thanks very much. What I'd like you to do now is you've all had a, a quick chat about your specific um, jobs. What I'd like you to do is to to get uh, your ideas down on paper to give me some idea um, in written form of of what you do. There are redundancies at Medflex and some workers fear that their job is dependent on success on the course. In Swindon, in the south of England, most of the members of the Literacy Job Club have been out of work for some time. Today they're playing the application form game. You're fairly warm, Pat. You're fairly warm. Don't go away from there. Well, it's down there, isn't it? No, no. It's that, it's that side. It's, it's in that one. Try and match it up. Like a jigsaw. Mm -hmm. A bit higher up. Pat. A bit lost here. Look at the middle of the sheet. About the middle. Hi, we are. Great, great. Nothing good. 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 Well done. <laughs> Do you know what it is by any chance? It's, it's education. As important in in learning to read and write is building confidence and that to me does the opposite. At the moment uh, it's law that uh, all children have to go to school. There's no law saying they should be, local authorities should um, spend any money at all on adult education or adult basic education. So I understand the literacy as, uh, as a, a dimension, a fundamental dimension of education and education is freedom, and education for freedom. Education uh, uh, based in a real respect for the persons. Of course, by doing that, by, by working in a serious way as educators, we are thinking, of course, also of the, the needs the human beings have. Like, for example, to get a job in order to, to live, in order to survive. But what, what I, don't, I don't like is, is, to, is to, reduce, to reduce the literacy process into a narrow vision of a of mere getting job or, or preserving job. I walked into a, a room and the atmosphere was absolutely brilliant, everybody was laughing. And I thought, oh yeah, I'm part of this, you know. Walked in, everybody laughing. And somebody says, have you read this? And they get it me. So I started laughing. I, I thought it was funny, you know, everybody laughing, I thought it must be funny. And I'm ready to take time, but you must have thought it was a quick read, because like, you know. Anyway, uh, so what are you laughing at? I don't think it's funny. And apparently it's been a, a striking miner, arguing with a, a working miner. And a striking man, his wife had dropped dead. And you see, women not being able to read and write. I didn't know, I just thought it was a joke. I, I know you can be embarrassed if you try to put over what you haven't got. Some people really didn't want to know me after reading, getting up, had problems with reading and writing. But see, he's not been educated. I'd like to think nobody knew at all. Certainly nobody made it obvious they did know. Because um, I got so sophisticated at covering up. If they know you can't read or write, they just forget about you. It's a stamp that's been pressed on you with, with passion from somebody who says, I've got the knowledge, you have no knowledge. Bang. Peter Good lives near Corrine Shires in West Yorkshire. Like Corrine and John Glynn, he left school unable to read and write, but unlike them, he's out of work and has been for some time. For some men, poor education and unemployment 
can start a downward spiral into crime and imprisonment. The illiteracy rate amongst prisoners is considerably higher than the rest of the population and the government-funded Adult Literacy and Basic Skills Unit has given special financial support to some prisons. We asked Peter Good to come with us to look at basic education in a prison with such support. Went to Wakefield Prison and uh, to go into somewhere that, to me, is enforced security and actually be insecure. And to go in a place where everything is run by an authority and be disarmed and to actually believe that people can find an education in such a place to me was exciting and yet very very threatening it was horrible and yet i was speaking and talking to people I was actually gaining strength through that the only way i can read a lot of this book is by recognizing the words because i have them already learned Mm -hmm. I got them in my head. Yeah. I have them learned. Yeah. You see? Yeah. You understand yeah. me? Yeah. So, it's the, so you're moving on to learn other words. Yeah, learning the new words. So the only way I can learn them is by recognizing them. Like summer. Mm. Now, how I recognize summer is by recognizing the words. That's right. You go put summer up in the front of me there. I need, I need learning it by recognizing it. Yeah. See? Yeah. Every weekday afternoon, Paddy O'Brien goes down to the education wing of the prison for literacy classes. Classes organised by the local college. Okay? 